I can say with confidence that this is probably the best film emulation software that I've ever used. So recently I was contacted by the team that created Dehancer, which is like kind of sick. And they gave me a chance to try out their software. This isn't just a LUT that you apply on top of your footage, but it's actually like a very complex algorithm working within your footage. And it's been worked on for years by 15 passionate photographers and filmmakers. You can probably tell that they have put a lot of heart into this program because it's quite intensive. Not only is it complex, but it's surprisingly easy to use. I just wanted to start out by saying this video is not sponsored by Dehancer. Everything that I say was not edited in any way, so you're given a full, unbiased review of the program. They did, however, give me a free three-month trial so that I could use this program enough to kind of give you like a thorough review. Dehancer Pro is both a photo and a video plugin. Today, I'm just gonna be focusing on DaVinci Resolve. So Dehancer Pro has 17 key features that I've listed. While I don't fully understand all of them, I will try my best to show you what you can do with them. Everything in this video will be graded exclusively using Dehancer tools, just to kind of show you the potential of it. Let's check it out. So today I wanted to show you some of the major tools that you can easily use to get that film look out of your footage without kind of having to use a film camera or buy expensive filters. There are actually so many features in Dehancer. I just wanted to focus on a few of them. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to create some nodes. The nice thing about Dehancer is that they already have built in color space transforms. So you can pretty much pick any camera. It looks kind of weird, but you know. It's, it's, there's lots of work to do so far. Choose camera. Vendor is going to be Sony. Kynefinity. Like what the heck is that? Uh, Sony a7S III. S-Log3. S-Gamut3.Cine. ISO 6400. 640. Okay. And boom. We got our color space transform. So I really like that they have that feature. It just makes it nice. You don't have to add as many nodes. Everything's kind of done inside Dehancer. There are actually 63 film stock profiles that you can choose from and several print options. Basically what you do is combine a film profile with a print option to kind of give you a final look. One of the more popular print options is the Kodak 2383. When using these options, just think that film stock is what goes into the camera. Print is kind of what comes out on the paper. I really like using Kodak Gold 200 film stock because of its warm boho like colors. So let's talk about film compression. 
This brings back some of the highlights information without affecting the rest of the image, essentially giving it a more neutral look. You can play around with the, all the sliders, make it as subtle as you want. There's a really good video on the Dehancer website that talks about it, but this is a really nice thing to do if you have like, you know, different lighting scenarios. It kind of keeps everything nice and neutral. Film grain is something that is kind of hard to understand if you're just starting out. There's a difference between grain and noise. Grain is a natural effect because of the film process, which is kind of based on the image itself. Noise is actually purely a digital effect caused by the sensor. Noise can actually cause color issues and other things to look weird, while grain is usually more subtle. But you can also crank it up to make it look more vintage. I think it's quite impressive that Dehancer reads your images and creates the grain based on the image rather than just sort of placing like a filter over top. Unfortunately, Grain won't show up very well on YouTube videos or Instagram because of the compression. So let's kind of talk about the next one, which is Bloom. I think this is a highly desired effect by filmmakers. It gives your images a much dreamier look, something that you'd see on like a mist filter or a vintage film lens. But the difference between Dehancer and using a filter, with a filter, what you see is what you get. You'd have to kind of use like a de-mist effect to kind of get rid of the effect or calm it down. With the plugin, you can dial it in as much as you want. And with each shot, you can get a different look. Next one is halation. It took me a really long time to understand what halation was until I started using the plugin. I've always been the type of person to really want like a super clean image with no defects. But over time, I wanted to kind of add more character to my image. I think Halation does that really well. Halation adds artificial lens imperfections to the highlights around your image. It's really subtle, but it can make a huge difference in giving that film look. So the next one is vignetting and vignetting is pretty self-explanatory. It just adds sort of like a shadowy vignette around your image. You can make it vertical, you can make it horizontal, you can make it as big as you want, as dark as you want, as light as you want. I like the customization of it. So these ones are interesting because they're actually kind of based around the imperfections of using film. These ones especially are like that. Film breath creates sort of like a subtle inconsistency in the exposure and the color. Each strip of film isn't exactly the same, so this replicates that breathing look that you get usually with a film. So gate weave, basically when film is moving through the camera, it can move around slightly. Like it can kind of like move, it's not perfectly going through. When you have it on like a stationary shot, like a like this shot right here showing like the color card, you can really start to see how the image jumps around slightly. Just note that it does slightly crop in on your image when you're using it. There are some other effects that can change the colors, the highlights and stuff. I really like using DaVinci's built-in tools to kind of do that. That's kind of the beauty of the plugin. You practically can make a look just using Dehancer's tools. I think the best thing that I've found is creating your look as you normally would and then having Dehancer at the very end of your grade. Apply a color space transform with all the other effects turned off and then when you're ready, start adding in the film effects. This is also really helpful because Dehancer is quite demanding. I find that Halation and Bloom especially tend to take up a lot of GPU power, even on my M1 Max. Oh, there's also an iPhone and an iPad app. I think this would be a lot easier to use on an iPad because using it on an iPhone has been quite difficult for me personally. To be fair, I do have an iPhone mini. It's really cool that you can use all the film stock profiles and editing features right on your phone. I got to say, the results are pretty incredible with iPhone footage. Just a quick tip, if you're looking for the highest resolution for the shots on your iPhone, make sure that the setting is compatibility and you're shooting in 4K with HDR off. Pretty incredible that you can get these results just editing on your iPhone. However there is one major caveat. The export times are incredibly long. Like this clip was about 40 seconds long and it took 10 minutes to export. Not to mention my phone felt very hot and it killed quite a lot of the battery. I think another thing that could be improved is that there's no way to view your video in full resolution. You're forced to look at the smaller review and you kind of have to pinch to zoom if you want to see anything, especially grain and halation and those little effects. Also there's no timeline so don't expect this to be a video editor like CapCut. But if you have a clip on your phone that you really want to edit and put it on your video, I highly recommend it because the film stock profiles and all the editing effects look fantastic. You can also make your own presets, which is fun. So the major difference between Dehancer and other programs or in-suite plugins is that most plugins are just overlays on top of your image. They are placed over top 
and have a pretty consistent look across all the images. So what's cool is that you don't necessarily have to use all of the plugins. You can actually just buy them separately if you really wanted to. I think my favorite profiles on here are the film grain, uh, the halation, and the film compression. They're subtle enough details that can kind of add a lot to my grades. So for me, I really enjoy using Eric Lenz's EOS Alpha LUTs because they give a really nice base look. What I'll do is kind of create my look and then I will add Dehancer to kind of give it a more filmic look at the end. So the real question is, is it a good investment? Because it's around $400. To be honest, with the amount of money that can be spent on filters, vintage lenses, and all that stuff to kind of give you that filmic look, you're already spending around $400 anyway. Plus with Dehancer, you can shoot as normally and clean as you want, and then adjust everything to your desired look. With a filter, you're kind of stuck with what, is, what it's giving you, like I said before. So if you're interested in checking out Dehancer Pro, Head over to the website. I'll give you a link down below. They have a trial so you can just, you know, you don't have to buy it. If you decide you want to buy it, use my code Bryce Cobell right here and you receive 10% off. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I really like this program. Um, I'm gonna keep trying to play around with it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna make another video about how to use Dehancer on Lightroom. So stay tuned to that. Yeah, well, that's it for now.